Hey guys, welcome back to the next episode of this mini series on my journey to getting to the British Open Paramoto Championships. In this episode, we are building a map board. In the last episode, if you've missed it up here, is when we side mounted our reserve on the paramotor to allow for this. Um, so in this video, I'm gonna be leaning heavily on an article that was written in Skywings in issue 374. And it was written by Paul Martin and he goes through how to build a map board, which you can see here, this is what a map board is. Essentially, it holds a map on your lap. Uh, it's got some pens and some stopwatches attached to it so you can navigate on your tasks. Um, so without further ado, uh, let's get into building this map board. Quite frankly, I've been running out of time with the competition. I've been so busy doing other little bits and pieces um, that I went on Amazon and I ordered loads of bits to get here. At this point in time, we are five days away from the competition. Things are about to get spicy because uh, yeah, I've done a bit of revision for the exam, um, as expected, uh, but I haven't really flown with this stuff yet. I'm making it, so obviously I haven't yet. Um, so there'll be a test flight early next week before we head to the comps on Wednesday. So let's see what pieces we've got come from Amazon, shall we? Some really solid glue. Highly recommend that stuff. Loctite super glue. Literally is incredible. A map protractor. So hopefully when we're planning tasks, we can use that. Compass for drawing circles, a ruler, and you know, the stuff that you used to have at school. Uh, that's all in there. We've got two stopwatches in case one fails, so we need a backup. Uh, we've got some permanent marker pens, different colors. They're doing different stuff, drawing little pictures. Um, and then we've got some it's basically fablon stuff. It's just clear self-adhesive stuff that you can stick down over your maps and then you can write on top of. So we've got that as well. Now, additional stuff that I already had, I've got this pole um, that will go inside the mat board itself and strengthen it. And then uh, this length of, I think it's come off of a slipknot hoodie for, at some point. Um, that'll go in there and then we'll have a clip at the bottom to clip to the elastic that will go between these uh, leg straps. Um, this will be nestled inside the board itself. And the board that I've got is just some Celotex type stuff. I found it on the side of the road, 50 mil. It was absolutely perfect. Um, I was going to go down and see Blaze because he had to buy a load. Um, but time's just got away, so didn't manage to get down there. Thank you for the offer anyway, Blaze. I will see you at the competition, mate. The last finishing touches is just some duct tape, really, just to cover it all up, make it look nice and pretty. So, the first thing I believe that we need to do is we need to cut a disc about 40 to 45 centimeters wide to make sure that that's gonna be the right size. We are gonna to have to measure in between our swing arms to make sure the board's gonna fit. Now, because I've got a bulldog, my arms are slightly higher up, so I can get away with something a little bit wider, but about 40 centimeters is gonna be about right by the looks of it. Um, so yeah, we're gonna go with that and see how far we get. It's always handy having someone who plays drums near you, isn't it, I suppose? 40 centimeters, spot on. Right, so we'll draw around this. That should be absolutely spot on perfect. Marvellous. Right, let's cut this out. Right, for, so for this next bit, probably wanna wear a mask for this stuff because it's nasty old business. Since filming this video, I've had a lot more chances to cut Celotex board. Uh, in this video, I wasn't really using the right tool. The best thing I found is actually an electric carving knife. Uh, or also just a standard hand wood saw does a pretty good job. Uh, it just creates a bit more dust than the uh, single blade that I'm using in this. Uh, if you want the job done fast, hand saw is the cheapest and easiest option to go for. Next, Paul says that we should mark the center of this circle that we've created. So for ease, I'm just gonna place this back on here, mark that hole, and then We'll measure just to make sure. Bang on, nice. We can now move that away. And we need to make a recess for this bar. So this bar will be dead in the center. And I've cut it at 
250 mil long. Now this bar was actually a broken washing horse uh, leg. So I've just cut it down to size. Um, and we'll cut this space in here, about 11 mil wide. Paul reckons this needs to be nice and snug. So let's make it nice and snug. Uh, this is gonna have to be recessed down uh, one to two centimeters uh, past this. Use a sharp knife for this, otherwise you'll go past your lines. There's that one, and we've got the jaw trying to get this piece out. Yes, mate. Thank you very much. Cheers. Perfect timing. Nice. 300 red pins. Bargain. So these are going to be used to uh, plot points on the map. Okay, so now that we've got that channel cut out, we can thread this through um, because I'm going to need that underneath here to clip onto the elastic, which is basically just some of this stuff. Send that through there. You're going to need to send the other side through as well. So we'll take this catch, make sure that's not twisted. Send that side through. There's our clip on this side. I want a little bit of space to give it so it can move around. Um, but the elastic's going to do the most part. Then on this side, our bar's going to sit in here. Push that in as far as it'll go. So we've got about a centimetre to two centimetres there. We just need to tie this off and the jobs are good. Let's just cut the ends of these, tidy it all up. Okay, now we need to cut a piece that'll fit over the top of that lot. So to do this, all I'm going to do is I'm going to keep cutting away little bits at it until it's flush with the top level here. And I'm going to start off bang in the middle because there's a knot there. There we go. There we go. Nice and flush. Right. All we really need to do now is we need to just cover it in duct tape to protect the board. <laughs> However, I'm going to do a few little extra bits like add some stopwatches. So I'll probably recess them in there so they're sort of tilting up a little bit at me as well. Um, and then add some spaces for some pins to go in. I also want to put a little bar on the top there with another loop of this stuff uh, to clip things to such as a little globe compass just to go on the top there. Um, so you get your north, east, south and west and then it doesn't matter if it's rolling around you don't have to keep this dead flat to get the, uh, the actual direction you're going in. To create the tethering loop, I've just employed the same technique that was used to recess the bar into the centre of the mat board. I've just now got another piece of that cord through that loop so you can just clip stuff to it. I've also stuck the pen lids into the board using super glue so they aren't going to come out when I'm trying to pull the pen out in flight and right on the map. And you can see here I'm using the Skywings magazine to roughly mark out where an A3 piece of map would be positioned. Right, so now I've made those additions. We have some Velcro on the top here. We've got the pen stuck in here, we've got a nice loop uh, for tethering stuff too, i.e. likely going to be that compass. Uh, and we've got our stopwatches that will go in the top here and when we're flying we can set them going. Uh, so I'm just going to have a couple of Velcro strips here instead, makes it a bit more customizable. Uh, who knows whether we're going to keep these like this. I guess time will tell, eh? So, let's get to wrapping this thing in duct tape. You can use whatever colour duct tape you want here, it's just to make the board much more durable. When you've got your map fab at the competition, you generally just stick it on with another piece of duct tape and it peels off pretty easily. And there we have it. So now what we're going to do is run this elastic cord through these leg loops, tie a temporary knot and then go and test fly it. So there we are guys, that's how to make a mat board as roughly as possible. Thank you to Paul Martin for his instructions in the Skywings mag. Looking forward to trying out the mat board and seeing how I get on with that and then having a practice go with some navigation tasks before the comp. So the next video is going to be uh, test flying all this stuff and efficiency and speed of my glider as well. I've got a rough idea in my head at the moment but I just like to confirm that, that'd be nice and then uh, we'll be all set up for comps then and then we can have a go at navigation tasks. So stick around for that video. If you like this video give it a thumbs up, if you've loved it subscribe and as always I will see you up in the air.